Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM Acting CEO Brian Malefe unveiled a new operating philosophy this week. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the strategy and its implications. Hi Terence. Hi Tracy. So what exactly is this new strategy that Brian Malefe has implemented? Well, I think what they're saying is uh, instead of a maintenance first type operating philosophy, which is what we really adopted last year, when it became clear that the energy availability factor out of the coal-fired power stations had fallen really sharply since 2010 to below uh, around 70% level. There was a need to recover and therefore focus on maintenance. And there was a message sent out by Eskom, um, by the previous uh, CEO, that uh, we needed to focus on maintenance and that would mean that we would go into episodes of load shedding. But uh, what Brian Molefe, the acting CEO, said this week is that they're wanting to continue with maintenance with no or minimal load shedding. He did say it on a day that there was load shedding in the evening and it's been followed by another day of load shedding this week. So it's not that they won't go into load shedding when they need to so stabilize the system, but there's an intention now to find a new uh, path where they can both maintain uh, within a parameter that they don't have to switch off the lights. And the, the way he describes it is like a household budget where you're earning 1,000 Rand and your debts are uh, 1,200 Rand a month. Firstly, knowing what your budget is and then prioritizing how you spend. And he sees load shedding as going into overdraft, which they're trying not to. So that was a simple, simplified version. But the more complicated theory behind it is that there's a, a production possibility frontier curve that they're wanting to stay within. And for winter, that would mean a budget of around 7,000 um, 7, megawatts of maintenance planned and unplanned that they should stay within uh, at, on a day when we may be demanding at peak times around 35,000 megawatts. And if, we, if they are able to stay within that budget, they are then able to keep the lights on and continue with maintenance at fairly, fairly high levels for winter which they say will be planned maintenance of about 5,500 megawatts. It's going to be a tall order because, as we know, the, um, by looking at the state of the system over the number of years, unplanned maintenance is quite a lot higher than planned maintenance, and that's because of the state, the age and the state of the, the fleet. Um, and, and getting ahead of the game requires that you stick to your maintenance schedules quite r rigorously and that you don't let anything slip. Now setting a budget uh, that you don't go out of might mean that we have more unplanned than, than planned maintenance, which could see us falling further, maybe in the short term recovering our energy availability, but in the longer term it might fall uh, more steeply. Now isn't this just a return to the keeping the lights on policy of the past? It does feel much like that. I think we are returning to something like that. Now that, that policy was introduced after 2008 Remember, it was the run-up to the, the FIFA World Cup, and there was a feeling that we had to build confidence again, show that we, are, we were able to host that tournament, that we could uh, keep the lights on, that we could keep e the economy going, um, and, and build the infrastructure and get ready for that tournament. And that was continued until really last year, around the middle of 2014, where it was decided that by pursuing that policy, the, the performance of the coal-fired fleet had really fleet had started to really deteriorate and we therefore th had to prioritize maintenance. So, it, But it does very much feel like if we do return to what Brian Malefi says, and, and we haven't two day, uh, for the first two days after the announcement, we haven't actually returned to maintenance with zero, uh, you know, with, with keeping the lights on. We haven't got to that stage yet. But if we do, it does very much feel like we are returning to that policy. And what are the risks of this policy, if any? Well, the upside would be that, um, you know, during this period of a very constrained reserve margin, um, that we can get this big constraint uh, on the economy lifted. So our energy availability factor will go up. Uh, but the downside of this, or the other side of the coin, is what I mentioned earlier. You might push up energy availability factor to the detriment of your planned maintenance schedule. So it's going to be a really difficult balancing act. And the way Brian Malefe describes it is they're wanting to find a sweet spot on the pr production possibility frontier curve where they can both do the maintenance 
and uh, keep the lights on on most days. But I think I must emphasize it's going to be most days. I don't think it's, it's going to be a performance where we won't see any more load shedding. And I think the risk will remain for at least the next 18 to 24 months, really until more Madupi units come in once Angula is fully up and running. And once we start seeing the first signs of Kusila, the Kusila units coming in, we're not going to get out of this very tight spot. Thanks, Terence. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.